Good evening and welcome to another exciting edition of the Ready to Run TV show, a show that focuses on youth candidates who are running for the 2019 general elections. This show is brought to you by Yaga Africa, the Not Too Young to Run movement in partnership with Channel Studio Vision and supported by the European Union. It's exactly 12 days to the 2019 general elections and there's so much heat in the in, in the country and people are getting ready, people are collecting their PVCs. And I ask you, have you collected your PVC? Are you getting ready to vote? As we say on Ready to Run, uh, make sure you go out on February 16th as well as March 2nd to cast your vote for a leader of your choice. Tonight on the show, we're joined by two young candidates who are running for different elections at the 2019 elections. It's my pleasure to welcome Badebo Rhodes Viva. Who is 35 yes. and a candidate of the People's yeah, Democratic exactly. Party running for the Senate. Lagos, the Lagos, Lagos West, West yes. Senatorial District exactly. um, for Lagos State. Yes. Welcome Thank to the you. show. With us tonight is Adora Onyechere, who is a candidate of the Action Alliance and running for the State House of Assembly um, to represent Okigwe constituency. Thank you very much. It's so exciting to have you on, on the show. Thank you. Let me start with you, Adora, because uh, today you're on the hot seat. Yeah, ladies uh, I, first. I know Adora <laughs> would usually interview me, but today I'm actually interviewing That's you. Fine. Let, let's start. Why are you running for, for um, State House of Assembly elections? First of all, I've always had the idea that leadership can only work if we start from the grassroots. You know, it's a bottom-up approach and um, there's a missing link between the leadership and the lead and having worked in the media for many years and also done community journalism and interacting with the masses at the local level I realized that some of the discordant tunes was because the people who are speaking for the people at the grassroots did not understand the language in which they spoke meaning that there was a shared divide on what really was on ground for what was being done at the center mm. and so I said to myself I mean it, it would be foolhardy for me to say oh, I would want to run for Senate or the House of Rep, which is I ideal. In, it will in, be full in, it, yes, because for me, I began to understand that you have to understudy the bonding between you and the people, what really substates, and what they really want from you as so, a candidate. So are you saying you know the people very well now? I think absolutely. I mean, if you if you judge me from now uh, that I'm a candidate and running for the State House of Assembly till about three years ago, there is a huge difference. I mean, I'm able to interact across the 22 communities that you know make up the Okigwe constituency. Mm. There are actually 11 words and what you also understand is that there are 22 councillors for the 22 autonomous com communities and for me I think frankly what actually is, is surprising is that if you look at the backwardness of our constituency which yeah. is absolutely the third largest amongst Oweri and Olu it, it so seems let's, let's just hold on there because you said it's the third largest because there's something um, <laughs> So, sort of um, relatable with your, your constituencies. Okay. By the way, you are running for Senate yes. um, to represent Lagos West. Exactly. And I understand it's the largest, largest in the country. Yes, 10 local governments. Are you prepared? Am I prepared? Yes. To represent the people of the Lagos? Definitely, definitely. Why? Because, one, I have, I believe I have empathy. Two, I know the needs of these people. I mean, these are people that we've been mixing with and interacting with for a couple of months now, leading for before the primary and in the campaign. What are now. those needs? Let's be more specific. What okay, are those so needs? Okay, so in every local government, there are different needs. So, for instance, at Jeremy Feludun, you have a situation of a crisis because of the ports that exist in Lagos State. So, you have tankers that have overrun the place, overrun the roads, that have spilled onto Kurudu Road, and also bordering with Amor Adolfi as well and Apapa. So we need to decongest our ports. We need to ensure that more ports are actually efficient and working in the country. So not everything that needs to come to Nigeria has to come to Lagos. Oh. So that's one base, that's one immediate need. In Badagri, the Badagri Express Road is a nightmare. It's a disaster, really, because the roads are so bad. It's, it, since it's an international road as well. So appropriation needs to be made to ensure that those mm. roads are optimized. When you come down to places like Ikeja, Badag um, Ikeja, Mushin, Alimosho, you're talking about youth empowerment, youth, em youth unemployment. You're also yeah. talking about inner roads that are going on in those places and how you can Is that push. your responsibility? It isn't, but you can use the platform to push for that. Isn't well. that happening now? No, it is not because of what currently exists. There are places where there are no roads. 
mm. in what we call roads are not roads. They are unacceptable. Mm. So you need to actually highlight these things. So the platform is not just about con collecting constituency allowance and what you can use that to do. Mm. You have a platform that you can use to push an agenda mm. to ensure better quality living for your constituents. We, we will come back. We'll come back to you. But, uh, but Adora, yes, um, you, you, you've been very involved in women and girls empowerment. As a state legislator, what, are you, what legislation are you going to propose or even amend um, if um, you, you, you win your elections? That, that is actually targeted at enhancing women or, or girl child education? Okay, first of all, um, I have been doing a lot of research looking at the Yemen State uh, House of Assembly. For the past two or three years, um, they have been able to pass up to 41 bills out of 116. And some of those bills, uh, which I was actually, um, well, uh, in, in my own terms, I thought that because other states were already, already implementing it and, and, and passing the VAP Act, um, Imo State, you know, followed suit in that. But I, I don't think it's enough. And looking at the population of Okigwe, Okigwe has over 185,000 people, roughly. And half of that population are women. And you're looking at the possibility of having more women in that population by 2050. And what I have seen being on ground is that there are a lot of out-of-school young girls. And there is a high level of also um, ir irresponsible behavior, such as prostitution. So what would you do? So the bill that I've actually proposed is one to look at heightening the educational curriculum to include skill acquisition for girls mm. that will sustain them, then also open them up to platforms such as, you know, uh, the Youth Connect Africa, which is being endorsed by the UNDP in Rwanda for young girls in school. So I believe that my experience exposure and also counting on from where I'm coming from, from the media angle, I believe that being a voice for women was just one of it. Now it's action time. And what I hope to do is that bring all those experiences to birth don't as I have, present that Adora, bill. don't you have men in your constituency? Why is it just women? What about the men? Well, it, it's, what would it's, you do for it's, the men? It's, it's, it's absolutely clear that from the inception of the creation of Imo State in 1976 through to date, we have had a patriarchal system. We have had more men in power. We have had more men in policy decision making. And those policy decisions that have been made and passed have not necessarily trickled down to the female folks. And so, so we your, do your, understand. Your priority is to focus on the women. My priority is to focus on both gender, but majorly on the women, because we have more young girls out of school and more young women who are willing to serve in policy development you know, uh, platforms, but do not have the advantage. Madibo, yes. in one of your engagements with your constituents or mm -hmm. your campaigns, you mm -hmm. said when you get to the National Assembly, you will sponsor an infrastructure development bill. Yes. Why? Because, like I said, you have the Badagri Express Road that's completely a mess, a wreck. And you only think about the population of Lagos State mm. and the amount of the need and the force and pressure on the existing infrastructure, you realize that Lagos State needs a special status in relation to the kind of infrastructure that but they it have. It is the commercial. It is, is, and the pressure, and the pressure, in fact, even West Africa. Yes, and the pressure of that is affecting the quality of life of Lagosians. So mm. people wake up in the morning at 4 a.m. to get to work. They're coming back at 10. They're sitting there in four hours traffic because of all the containers and tankers that have to come to Lagos, even though they're going to Kano or they're going to Bauchi or Kogi State. Yeah. We need to do better in terms of moving um, transportation logistics that are coming into the state. And that's why I talked about infrastructure, a special infrastructure bill, and also working with other states to ensure that we can refurbish existing ports so we can decongest our ports and make sure that those roads that we're doing today don't get run down because of all the load that's going on it. I'm going to ask you, both of you one, one question because you running in Okigwe, you're also running in Lagos. These yeah. two states are states that have a long history of political contestations <laughs> yeah. and quite interesting. But do you think you would win this election? Yes, by God's grace. Why? Because we are working, people are tired of a, a distracted senator that his ambition is to go and become governor of Ogun State. He failed, so he's coming back trying to represent the people of Lagos. People are looking for a breath of fresh air. People are, look, are yearning for youth representation. And people are looking for a new kind of leadership. And that's we, why we, I feel we will that talk great. about this new kind of leadership. But Adora, mm -hmm. did you think you would win this election? Absolutely. Why? It's a new dawn. 
And I think that for everybody who is a citizen and a member of Okiwe constituency understands that it is no longer business as usual. It is time for us to look at changing politics and making it business and making politics about service. Mm. For a long time, people have gone into politics and have become subservient, looking at it as a career rather than a vocation. And I hope to change that because what we are seeing is that a lot of people who are leaders, who are supposed to work for the people, feel that it is the privilege of them serving the people and the people should appreciate it. So so it's time for people who would really work the work and also talk and work the talk. Badebo, yes. you're running under the PDP. Yes. Why did you choose the PDP as a party to run when there were other parties um, that, that were that, the that PDP, the PDP, in, the PDP in Lagos State was very open to youth. And you see the example set with Honorable Tony sponsoring Not Too Young to Run Bill. And even just going and approaching leaders of the party saying I wanted to run for Senate, nobody the wants to laugh at me. Is the PDP really pro-youth? Yes, it is, because it's produced me. That because if it is, if you look at the data released by INEC and mm -hmm. the list of candidates... The PDP Lagos the State. I can't speak for the oh, whole PDP Great, so, so maybe so the PDP, PDP Lagos because State. Because PDP if you look Lagos at the party <laughs> ranking, yes. and the PDP is somewhere around 54th. Well, if I may say, so it, so when, when really the Not Too Young to Run bill was passed, I don't know if any other party did this, but PDP reduced the cost of nomination forms by one million and actually mm. put an asterisk saying to take into account. But not that's not the, that's bill. not the lowest. There it's are several, not the lowest. There are yes. several parties but, that had but, lowest. But a one million differential is significant. Mm. Also, I emerged as the youngest central candidate in any major party, mm. right? So that is something. So it's more than just the rhetoric. And I must say that Lagos PDP is unique in that sense as well. So. Lagos is sense of excellence. What can I say? Why Action Alliance? Well, it is time for, lo for us to look at, you know, in between the lines of politics, especially with emerging parties. I, I remember that when the Not Too Young to Run started this movement, a lot of people were worried about how accommodating the, you know, popular parties would be and what sort of enabling environment that they would also encounter. But what I have seen is that when you look at the small parties, or so to speak, the newer parties, uh, you find that, that as a youth, you are able to build the structures. You're also able to grow with the structure and be able to put into place significant values that will, in, will enable the party to push mm. its values to the people. Um, again, you're looking at <laughs> The, the population of the world is over 7.7 .7 billion and thereabout. And you have, you know, globally, we're going to look at 840 million youth by 2050. And we're saying that we have over 91 political parties in Nigeria. In Imo State alone, we have 67 governorship candidates. Our candidate under the Action Alliance seems to be the, one of the youngest. Because what you have also found out about Action Alliance is that it has given a platform, a new opening for young politicians to come out and test your popularity and also show people your capacity to serve. And I believe that Action Alliance, amongst any other party, I stand to be corrected, has also given a voice to the Nigerian women. I remember categorically when there were substitutions to be done, my party escorts stood categorically and said, we will not substitute any other member, especially the women folk within the party, and we stand by it. And I believe that other okay. political parties should begin to also toe the line. All right. We'll go on a very short break, and then when we come back, we will continue the discussion. In case you're joining us, this is the Ready to Run, a TV show brought to you by Yaga Africa, the Not Too Young to Run Women, Channel Television, and supported by the European Union. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 